Hi, my name is Chris Wilson, and I studied biochemistry at Reed College. But this summer, I'm doing research here in Mariana Wolfner's lab at Cornell University. And in this video, I want to teach you all a bit about the importance and complexity of ejaculate. So, when we think of conception and sexual interaction, we typically think of sperm from the male being transferred into the female and then going on to do magical things with the egg, like make babies and kittens and all kinds of great stuff. But sperm isn't the only thing being transferred into the female. The ejaculate is a complex and diverse material, and yes, it does have sperm, but it also has a lot of other stuff, like proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. And we call this other stuff the seminal fluid. And the question that Marianne and her colleagues are asking is, what does it do? In the past, researchers have discounted the seminal fluid, saying that it's just a medium for the sperm to swim through, or some sort of sperm food. And granted, all those things are totally valid, but there's still so much more to this mysterious substance. And some of the more profound effects of the seminal fluid can be seen in Drosophila melanogaster, the fruit fly. But before we get into it, let's talk about some anatomy. This is the reproductive system of male Drosophila. Up here are the testes where the sperm is made and stored, and then these are the accessory glands, and that's where the seminal fluid is stored. During ejaculation, the sperm from the testes and the seminal fluid from the accessory glands combines in the ejaculatory duct and then leaves the male. To end up here, in the female reproductive tract, where sperm then passes through the uterus to be stored in the sperm receptacle or the spermatoche, and then the female ovulates, meaning mature eggs from the ovaries pass through the oviducts to be fertilized in the uterus and then laid. And then laid. So where is the seminal fluid in all this? Well, that's where things get really interesting. Female Drosophila exhibit many post-mating responses, like the one I've already mentioned, ovulation, but they also create and lay more eggs, they're less receptive to other mates, and they eat more and sleep less. All of these responses are caused by proteins in the seminal fluid. Ovulin is the seminal fluid protein that initiates ovulation in the female fly. But like many seminal fluid proteins, the effects of ovulin are pretty short-lived, because it just kind of floats around the reproductive tract and can be completely flushed out in as little as 24 hours after mating. But there are long-term post-mating responses, like increased egg laying and decreased receptivity. And these things are caused by a special seminal fluid protein called sex peptide. Instead of just floating around, sex peptide actually binds to sperm and is stored in the female sperm storage organs. And then it's slowly released for up to two weeks. However, that animation was a bit of an oversimplification, for more than one reason. But the one I'm going to be talking about is that sex peptide can't just directly bind to sperm. It requires some combination of other proteins to attach it. And the question that I'm trying to answer this summer is what are they? Are they seminal fluid proteins, female secretions, sperm proteins, or does it require some conglomeration of all of these things? Previous members of Mariana's lab have narrowed down the long list of possible candidates to just 21, and I've been using genetic tools to knock down or inhibit each one of the genes responsible for creating them. Then, I'll take males containing this knockdown and mate them with wild-type females. If the females don't exhibit the long-term post-mating responses caused by sex peptide, this will indicate that the candidate protein is probably involved in attaching sex peptide to sperm. Whoa, that's super cool! And all it took was some Drosophila genetics and behavioral assays? Yeah, science is magic! This summer I'm also dissecting out the low reproductive tract of female flies. So that means everything below this bit. At several different time points after mating with their knocked down males, and then running a western blot on them and staining it for sex peptide, just to make sure it's really not there. I'm also staining the blots for several different proteins that we know are a part of this sperm sex peptide binding system to try and organize the order of operations of these proteins. So you might be thinking to yourself, why do I care what proteins bind this one thing to sperm? Well that's a valid question and I'll address it now. Seminal fluid proteins aren't just found in Drosophila. Humans have them, mosquitoes have them, kittens have them. Almost all organisms that ejaculate during sex have them. And although the actual sequence isn't highly conserved, you see the same types of proteins in all seminal fluids. That suggests some sort of conservation of functionality. So now you're probably thinking, well mammals don't lay eggs, so whatever. Yes, that's totally true, but female bodies know when there's semen inside of them. And although mammals don't lay eggs or have any sort of behavioral responses, they do have a slew of physiological responses that are both long-term and help the healthy development of the offspring. 
So, knowing more about seminal fluid proteins could not only let us know more about mammalian fertility, but it could also help us develop better methods of in vitro fertilization. Whoa! Yeah, and let's remember that Drosophila are insects, and there are also models for a lot of other insects, including mosquitoes that carry vector-borne illnesses like malaria and Zika virus. And like I said earlier, although there is a lot of conservation and functionality of the seminal fluid proteins, the actual sequences differ slightly. So if we know more about seminal fluid proteins, we might be able to develop smarter pesticides that directly target the fertility of specific species. Yeah. Alrighty, so that was my video, and I hope you all know a little bit more about ejaculate. But before I go, I want to give a really special thanks to the Society of Developmental Biology for making me a CHOOSE Fellow and allowing me to be a part of all this amazing research. I also want to thank Cornell University's BCMB department for folding me into their REU. Uh, yeah!